Well, hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about depreciation. And I'm going to be talking about the different types of depreciation, how it's calculated, um, bonus depreciation, which is state of the art. And when I say state of the art, it's current law. Um, depreciation for taxes and comparing the various methods. Now, I'm, there's a lot of slides in this presentation. It's a very complete presentation on depreciation. However, there's really only two methods you need to be concerned about um, when you get into industry. And in reality, when you get into industry, if you work for a company of any size, you won't be doing these calculations. You'll be going to your accounting department with the information and they will be giving you a depreciation calculation. Now, if you're working for a very small company, you might be doing the depreciation. So I'll address that a little bit more going forward. Um, and I'm going to be talking about um, things like depreciation, something called units of production and depletion. These are for natural resource companies, coal mines, energy companies. Um, if you own a for example, a, a farm that has Christmas trees on it, things like that. So what we want to do is we want to distinguish between depreciation and cash flows and understand the different types of depreciable property and then understand the classic methods. And those are fairly straightforward. And then we're going to account for capital gains and losses. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm also going to discuss bonus depreciation and makers, M-A-C-R-S, Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System. And then we're going to compare some of the commonly used depreciation methods. Now, depreciation is like an expense. It's just you, when you um, incur an expense, you treat it for tax purposes at the time it is incurred. Depreciation is taken over time. Okay, so expenses, and, and there's a reason for this because the next video I'm going to talk about is going to be taxes. And the concept is that by uh, using depreciation, we can reduce our tax expense. And the premise I'm going to say have is that it's always good to reduce your tax expenses, comma, legally. So I won't, I won't advise anything that would, would not be legal, but we want to do what the tax laws allow us to do. So expenses are subtracted from revenues as they occur, and, and our taxes are paid on revenues less expenses. So things like labor, utilities, materials, consumables. Capital, which is like a major investment, is expensed over time. So instead of taking it all at once, we take a little bit every year over a period of time. And the method for taking the depreciation, ex de taking this expense over time is called depreciation. So if we think about our income statement, we have, you know, total revenue, cost of goods sold, and the cost of goods sold can be wages, materials, utilities. This is obviously a condensed form. Depreciation and then other costs. And then this comes down to a total cost and our taxes are paid on this net income before taxes. So you can see that the larger this total cost is, the smaller our tax payment is going to be because this number is going to be smaller. Now, we're either, we have an expense, it's either going to be taken in this line item here all at one time, wages, materials, utilities, or in this line item, depreciation over time. And I'm going to talk about the differences and, and why they occur. So GAAP, which is generally accepted accounting principles, except allows for four methods of valuation or depreciation. 
straight line declining balance units of production sum of years digits um, all of these are included in this presentation however the only one we're really going to study is straight line because that's all that's used today um, the other methods are used um, they're, they're, they're historical and there are better methods to use uh, per the federal and state governments. And the federal and state governments have set tax law utilizing primarily modified accelerated cost recovery system depreciation and bonus depreciation. So these are, these are linked together. And so the three we're going to try to understand most are straight line and makers. Um, because those are what you're going to be using in industry. So well, this is not an accounting class, so I want to be teaching you what you're going to be using. So the concept of depreciation is that it's a decline in the assets market value due to deterioration or obsolescence. So things like computers, they decline in value over time because they become obsolete. A vehicle. If you use a vehicle for three years, it's not as valuable as when you first purchased it um, because it's being, you know, there's wear and tear on the vehicle. And it's a decline in the assets value to the owner. Um, it's a systematic, this is important, it's a systematic allocation of an asset's cost over its depreciable life. So basically, if the asset cost $10,000, and it were to decline uniformly over a 10-year life, its asset value would be reduced by $1,000 every year. So instead of taking an expense of $10,000 in year one, you'd be taking an expense, a depreciation hit of $1,000 every year for 10 years. Um, and depreciation can be calculated by various methods for taxes and other methods for valuation. So this is legal, and so sometimes companies have two sets of books. And so the key thing here is depreciation is over time, a capital asset, is depreciated over time, not as the expense occurs. This is for tax purposes. It's because the assets lose value gradually over time. It's a non-cash accounting entry. So the cash entry is when you spend the money for the asset. The entry for accounting purposes is the depreciation, and that's taken over the depreciable life. Examples are long-lived assets, buildings, vehicles, machines, etc. Long-lived being greater than a year. Um, property is depreciable if it's used for business purposes to produce income. So I have a, a car at home that I use for commuting purposes. That's really not a, a business purpose, if you will. But I have a truck that is solely dedicated to my farm, and that is for business purposes, so it's depreciable. The useful life has to be longer than a year. If it's less than a year, it is treated as an expense. And it has to lose value. And you don't depreciate an asset if you lease the asset. So if you were to have a business and you were to purchase a vehicle, you could depreciate it. If you were to lease the vehicle, then you would not be able to depreciate it. Land is not depreciable. Inventory is not depreciable. Working capital is not depreciable. That's important because in, um, in the project that we're doing, we have a working capital component. Um, only the business portion is depreciable if you use the asset for business and personal use. So here's an example of, of different things and whether they're expensed or depreciated. So pizza dough and toppings, if you have a, a pizza making business, those are expensed. 
your delivery van is depreciated. Wages are expensed. Furnishings, if they have a life longer than a year, are depreciated. A new oven is depreciated. Utilities for a refrigerator are expensed. The refrigerator itself would be depreciated. And so um, this is a classical definition. You may want to, you don't have to memorize it. You have the, you have the slides, but, but the book value as a function of time is going to decline. And it's going to decline each year by the amount of depreciation you take in that year. So for example, the book value at the end of period one, or the book value at the end of period zero is basically what you paid for it because you haven't taken any depreciation for it. The book value at the end of period one is what you paid for it minus the depreciation in the first year. And so you can see here that the book value of an asset declines over time down to its estimated salvage value. Now, um, there's three things that can happen when you sell your, uh, when, when the um, asset is disposed of. So when we get out to period five in this example, we've estimated, at time period zero, we estimated a salvage value. We can either sell it for more than the salvage value, less than the salvage value, or exactly the salvage value. Um, I guess there's, uh, there's four things that can happen, I guess. Or we can sell it for more than we paid for it. That would be like purchasing a house. And you, you know, you buy a house, you depreciate it for rent, you depreciate it down to an estimated salvage value, then you sell it for more than you paid for it. So if you sell it for more than the salvage value, but less than the original cost basis, you have uh, something called depreciation recapture. If you sell it for less than the salvage value, um, you have a loss. And if you sell it for more than you paid for it, you have depreciation recapture up to what you paid for it, and then a capital gains uh, on the amount above what you paid for it. Um, the federal government play, um, works with this capital gains, and they, they have different tax rates that could be, if they want to incent income, they may make the capital gains rate lower than the regular tax rate. Um, this is not a common item, but it is common for stocks and bonds, real estate, art, things like that. Now, the fourth item is if you sell uh, if you sell the asset for exactly what you estimated the salvage value to be, and then there's, there's, there's nothing. It's not a gain. It's not a loss. It's not a capital gain. So this is a picture of the three items here where we paid 10000 for an item. In this case, we estimated that we would sell it for 5000 but in reality, we sell it, it has a market value of 7000 So at that time period that we dispose of the asset, there's a $2,000 gain. It's a depreciation recapture gain. Now, same, same scenario, but instead of selling it for 7000 we sell it for 2000 Now there's a $3,000 loss. Third case, same scenario, but instead of selling it for seven thousand or two thousand, we sell it for fourteen thousand. Then we have a five thousand dollar depreciation recapture, and then the amount above the original purchase price is a four thousand dollar capital gain. So you're gonna, we're gonna be doing some homework problems. I don't think it's gonna be in this set. But um, there's going to be, you may want to be able to, to refer to this, this slide. 
Now, this is this is all sounding like a lot of accounting, and it is. And I think you just want to be familiar with what's going on in the terminologies. The actual mechanics of calculating it in all likelihood will be done by the accounting department at the company that you work with. Okay, so some of the classical um, methods of um, uh, computing depreciation are straight line, declining balance, and some of the year's digits. Um, declining balance is a combin, I mean, sorry, maker's depreciation is a combination of declining balance and straight line. And so I'm going to, you're going to have slides showing everything, but I'm going to skip over the slides on declining balance and some of yours digits because you're not going to be using those in industry. So you can refer to them if you like, but you're not accountants. So straight line and makers are what we're going to be most concerned about. And straight line depreciation is exactly what it sounds like. Your depreciation is your book value minus your estimated salvage value divided by the number of years of depreciable life. And the depreciation value is the same every year. So depreciation year one equals two equals three equals depreciation n. It's a straight line. So if we have an asset that we paid $9,000 for, it's got a depreciable life of five years, and we estimate the salvage value, and this is estimated at time period zero of $70,000, our depreciation is 166 every year. And so the book value of the asset declines every year by 166 down to a value of $70,000 over five years. Now, again, I'm going to skip over this. Um, just recognize that maker's depreciation was derived from the declining balance depreciation calculation. Um, bonus depreciation is sort of hand in hand with maker's depreciation, but what it is, is it's an incentive to make investments. And so it began in 2001 and it allows for 100% expensing of some or all of the assets cost. The idea is to accelerate the tax deduction of a longer live asset. And so it can be as high as 100% and is low, well, I'll go through this in the next slide, but I, uh, it began in the, um, in the Bush administration. It was expanded in the um, Obama administration, and then um, I think it was continued on under the Trump administration. So this is what it looks like. In um, 2001, it was 30%. And um, what that meant was 30% of the asset's value was written off immediately and 70% was depreciated. Then about 2004, it went to 50%. From 2005 to about 2008, bonus depreciation went away. Um, then in 2008, I don't know if you remember or have read, but there was a serious stock market crisis. Uh, bonus depreciation came back. It went as high as 100%. And the idea here is to incent businesses to make investments to stimulate the economy. So they get to write off their expenses faster, and that allows them to pay less taxes up front. We'll explain that in the next, in the next video. Um, so this is the end of the Obama, Obama administration. Bonus depreciation was 50%. Uh, under Trump, it went up to 100% and is scheduled to decline over time back to zero by about 2028, I believe, or 2026. This will all make sense, on, I believe, after you see an example or two. And so... 
Um, under the Trump administration, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, 100% bonus depreciation came in for 2018 to 2022, and it's phased out over time. I said 2028, it's, it's down to zero at 2027. And it, it's designed to help small businesses. So it allows for complete expensing of a million dollars in the year of purchase. Now, otherwise you would take it over time. So it's not a gift, but it's accelerated. So as an example, if, uh, if an asset has a cost basis of $80,000 and a salvage value of $20,000, how much bonus depreciation is allowed? in these various years. Well, in 2019, it's easy. It's 100%. We just went over that. So we can write off 100%. In 2027, it's easy. It's 0%. 2015, we go back here, it's 50%. So we can write off $40,000. In 2023, well, it's going to say right here, um, 80%, 80% times $80,000 is um, $64,000. Notice that the salvage value is not a concern. Even though we're writing off 100%, it's not a concern. So what happens is when you sell the asset, if you sell it for $20,000, you will have a depreciation recapture of $20,000. Now let's say we have this same asset that we, we talked about with the straight line depreciation. Uh, cost is $900,000, depreciable life, five years, salvage value, $70,000. But in this case, we have 100% bonus depreciation. Then the depreciation we're gonna take in year one is the full amount of $900,000. There's no more depreciation to take because we've taken all of the depreciable value in year one. And then upon disposal of the asset, if we sell it for anything greater than zero, that's going to be depreciation recapture. So let's say we have an asset that costs $10,000. And we're going to depreciate it with 100% bonus depreciation. And... We want to find out what the gain or loss, if the asset is disposed of after five years. It's $7,000, zero, or if it costs you $2,000 to dispose of it. So you can't throw it away. You have to pay $2,000 to get rid of it. So you're, you're fully taking 100% of the value of the, of the asset in the, the first year. So in case A, $7,000 is the gain you're going to realize since the book value is zero. In case B, that's a non-event because the book value equals the salvage value. In case C, you're going to take a loss of $2,000 because the salvage value, salvage cost, if you will, but the salvage value is less than the book value. Now, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of the history behind the Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System. And this is a method for depreciation. So we have straight line depreciation. I skipped over declining balance. I skipped over some of years digits. Um, makers is a type of depreciation. And what, it, what its history is, is back in the late... 1970s, early 1980s, there was a thing called stagflation. And stagflation had high unemployment and high interest, high inflation rates, which meant high interest rates. And so the, uh, the Reagan administration wanted to incent businesses to make investments. So they completely overhauled the depreciation system. They called it the general 
depreciation system. I believe it was called accelerated uh, cost recovery system. Um, its base is the declining balance system that I skipped over because you don't need to know that to do maker's depreciation. It switches a straight line at the optimal time. And um, it uses property classes to determine the recovery period. So historically, you, you take depreciation, you estimate the asset's life. And this one, this new system uses a property class. And it's typically shorter than the asset's true life. It assumes all salvage values are zero, which means there's going to be recapture in all cases if the asset has a value at the end of its useful life. And, and it uses a table of percentages to simplify the calculations. So this was put out in about 1981. And then um, it was revised, modified. So it went from accelerated cost recovery system to modified accelerated cost recovery system. Um, and, and you can look this up right now. Um, you can Google it and you will, uh, you will find the tables on the internet. I'm going to show them to you in this, in this presentation. But the first thing you do is you need to determine the assets cost basis. So what did you pay for it? Um, that includes installation costs, any fees, taxes, things like that. And then you determine the property class and recovery system. I'll get into that in a second, but basically, depending upon the type of property, you use a different recovery period. If you can't determine the type of property, it is automatically called a seven-year property. So if you can't determine it, it's a seven-year property. Um, example, I bought an olive farm several years ago. Um, the olive farm came with several, ma not mature, but not young olive trees. Olive trees are not a defined property class, so I was able to depreciate them, but I had to use seven-year property for the olive trees. So these are the classes. So if it's a special handling device for food and beverage, special tools for manufacturing of finished plastic products, it's three-year property. Automobiles and trucks, aircraft, computers, petroleum drilling equipment, five-year property. Seven-year property is all other property, office furniture, etc. cetera. Ten-year property, um, assets for petroleum refining, vessels. Fifteen-year property, um, telephone utilities. Twenty-year property, sewers. 27-year property, residential rental property. So if you're renting a problem, um, if you're renting an apartment in San Luis Obispo right now, the owner is probably depreciating it under a property class that's got a 27 and a half year life. And if it's non-residential real property, um, that would be a commercial building, 39 years. So those are the classes of property. And this ta are tables you can refer to, but if you look them up on the internet, You'll see these exact tables. So the first step in determining depreciation under the maker system is determining the property class you fall in. That's in this column on the left. Then the second step is, well, let's go through an example. If you have a computer, what is the cost recovery period for a computer under the maker system? Well, I happen to remember it's five-year property right here. So the answer is five years. Now, the procedure in applying maker's depreciation is you take the cost basis that's going to be depreciated and you multiply it by an appropriate percentage. And the percentage is based upon the um, property class. So. We have three year, five year, all these are the various property classes. I don't have 27 and 39 year on here, but 
what it is is if you uh, have a three-year property class your depreciation in year one these are percentages and each one of these columns add up to one so you multiply your original cost basis your your cost basis for your book value at time period zero by each one of these percentages and it will give you a depreciation stream three year five year seven year ten year I think for most of our purposes here, we're never going to go beyond 10 years. Um, the asterisk about converting to straight line, this is, this is the theory behind the calculation, it being double declining balance, converting to switching to straight line at the optimal period to switch. Now, you're going to ask, why do we have a four-year depreciation life under three-year class, three-year property? The reason is because the assumption is that the investment is made in the middle of the year. So you, you get basically a half year's depreciation. And so these numbers would be higher in the first year if it was really a three year life. But that's the concept. So three year property has a four year life, five year property has a six year depreciable life, et cetera. So if we have a seven year property with a cost basis of $150,000 and a salvage value of $30,000, the depreciation calculation is $150,000 times these percentages. These percentages are right off of this column right here. And so this is the depreciation you take in each year. And this is the book value for each year. If you remember that, that original formula, the book value is the cost basis minus the sum of the depreciation. And so maker's depreciation depreciates down to a value of zero. And if you sold this asset for $30,000 at the end of the 10th year, that would be recaptured depreciation and we'll discuss the tax treatment of that next time now what happens with makers depreciation and bonus depreciation so let's say we have 60 percent bonus depreciation this same original asset nine hundred thousand dollar value seventy thousand dollar book value uh, salvage value five year makers class so right off the bat year one we take five hundred and forty thousand dollars depreciation immediately so that's our bonus depreciation that leave and we're in with makers depreciation we ignore the salvage value that leaves three hundred and sixty thousand dollars to be depreciated using makers so in year these there's three hundred and sixty thousand dollars is going to be multiplied by twenty percent thirty two percent etc so twenty percent of three hundred and sixty thousand dollars seventy two thousand dollars so this is the maker's depreciation and then on top of that i'm sorry this is the maker's depreciation, 20%. This is the book value. On top of that, we, in year one, we will add $540,000. And so we will take $612,000 of total depreciation. That would be bonus depreciation plus maker's depreciation. And so that at the end of the sixth year, we will have fully depreciated the nine hundred thousand dollars similar example we have a seven-year asset class hundred and fifty thousand dollars forty percent bonus depreciation exactly the same calculation we write off sixty thousand dollars of bonus depreciation we have ninety thousand dollars left to apply the seven year percentages to. And then again, we'll take the $60,000 plus the 
I'm sorry, the 12,861 to give us $72,861. So where we're going with this is depreciation reduces taxes up front at the cost of paying more taxes later on. But we know that money in the future is worth less than money today. So if we pay more taxes in the future rather than today, we will net on a present value basis pay less taxes. So it may take a while to absorb that. But this is what this looks like conceptually. If we have 100% bonus depreciation, we pay it fat, we get it faster. This is maker's depreciation. We haven't covered declining balance. This is straight line. So maker's is better than straight line. 100% bonus is better than maker's. Okay. Um, I'm just going to talk about these next couple of types of uh, uh, methods to write off assets. I'm just going to tell you what they're used for. Um, we're not going to go into them. I'm not going to, I think I've got a homework problem on them, but you're not going to see this very often in industry. I just want you to be aware of what they are in case you happen to see something like this on the FE exam. So units of production depreciation, you basically take your, your original cost minus your salvage value. You estimate your total lifetime production and your depreciation in the each year is the production for that year. So you'll have a, a number of productions for each year that you're estimating that will total up to the total lifetime production. And so in some ways it's similar to, it's not exactly like straight line, but it's conceptually similar. And then here's an example that if you, uh, you know, if you have this much sand and gravel production, What's your depreciation going to look like uh, if you pay $90,000 for it and it's got a salvage value of $70,000? And so it's going to be four times as much in year three as in year one and five and twice as much in year three as in year two and eight. So we've got a total of 12, 12 is 24 and 16, 40,000. And that's our denominator. So we're going to take 10% of 830 or um, 83,000 the first year and the last year. So this is what the depreciation schedule would look like. And this is twice as much. Years two and four is twice as much as year three. Years one and five are said years two and four are half as much as year three. Year three is four times as much as year one and year five. Now, I, I'm going to just mention the word depletion. Depletion is exhaustion of natural resources by removal. So coal mine, crude oil, there's two methods, cost depletion, and percentage depletion. Cost depletion is very similar to units of production depreciation. So you basically estimate how much you're going to produce over life and you know it's a proportionate amount. Percentage depletion is different. When you hear about tax benefits offered to energy companies, I believe they're talking about percentage depletion because percentage depletion is based upon the property's gross income during a year. And so if you drilled an oil well when the price of oil was $20 a barrel and you're producing that well today when the price of oil is $80 a barrel, your gross income is going to be a lot higher now than when you drilled it. And so um, 
I don't want to get into the mechanics behind it because there are, are tax, uh, there are accounting groups dedicated to percentage, computing percentage depletion. I just want you to be aware that there's two types of depletion, cost and percentage, and percentages where there could be, um, and, and this is not something new. This is not like this is a new thing. This was put in place years and years and years ago. So there's just a couple of different, um, there's an example here of cost depletion. And then for percentage depletion, there's different rates allowed for various assets. So sulfur, uranium, et cetera, gold, graphite, uh, various things. And then there's another example of a percentage depletion. So in Excel, there are functions um, that will do calculations for you. So let's ignore double declining balance, sum of years digits, variable declining balance. Straight line will compute the depreciation if you pop in the cost, salvage value, and life. But if you think about the formula for straight line depreciation, it's not really difficult, right? So I, I almost feel like it's better to embed the formula in your models rather than use this, the function. The other method we, we are going to use is maker's depreciation. My recommendation to you is that once we start depreciating, you have vectors in your models with these three percentages. I don't believe I'm going to give you any problems with more than a ten year, uh, seven year class. So you would just refer to these in computing your depreciation. Okay, so where are we now? This is the end of the video on depreciation. This, I, I, I'm just introducing you to the topic. You're going to feel a little bit empty until I tell you how to use depreciation in computing income taxes. That's going to be coming in the next presentation.